Thank you very much. Um, um, so I'm Christina campos Hori and I'm the program officer at Arrow UK. So today I would like to uh, tell you a little bit about a recent project uh, we, we did on research libraries and digital humanities tools, and more specifically look at how collections were used um, as tools for collaboration um, between libraries and digital humanities scholars. Um, so first I would like to tell you a little bit, um, to give you some contextual information and I'll let you know the reasons why, I decided, um, why we decided to do this project. So uh, there has been, um, one of the reasons um, was that there has been a lot of discussion around the, the challenges posed to research libraries uh, by digital humanities scholarship, especially when it comes to uh, building and maintaining uh, digital projects. Also, while doing some of, um, some of the research for this project, we realized that there has been very little published research on the role of libraries um, in, in digital humanities scholarship and um, little documentation on the, collabora on the collaborations that um, are being formed at the moment. Um, also, finally, um, this was very much within our, our strategic uh, goals. Um, and more specifically, we are interested in defining, in further defining the role of uh, research libraries in digital scholarship and facilitate the sharing of best, of best practice through, through these types of projects. Okay, so a little bit more about our methodological approach and how um, we, we uh, conducted this project. So, um, this was uh, the definition we uh, decided to employ as the general frame, framework for designing um, our research. Um, and is the research and teaching made possible by digital technologies or that takes advantage of them to ask and answer, and answer questions in new ways. And um, this is uh, the digital humanities um, definition that we employed. And of course, there has been a lot of discussion and debate around what digital humanities is, but we found that this, uh, this definition was broad enough to, um, to be able to um, refer and include and relate to the different practices that are conducted uh, within uh, the library. And of course, it has been used uh, by other studies uh, looking at the role of uh, libraries and digital humanities scholarship in the US. Uh, so we decided to to do, first of all, a survey. And uh, just before talking about the survey, I'd like to uh, say a little bit about our objectives through this project. And some of our objectives uh, were to explore the types of digital humanities initiatives that RLUK members um, supported or participated, or participated in at the point of this research, to identify current uh, support and or collaboration models employed by, by member institutions, investigate the role of libraries in the creation, archiving, curation, and preservation of digital humanities tools, as well as understand related um, challenges and requirements for developing um, this role. And finally, to start building a community around digital humanities issues that concern member institutions, raise awareness about related practices in the library sector and make suggestions that um, will eventually lead to further discussion and debate. Uh, so, for the purposes of the survey, uh, we developed a questionnaire uh, that, uh, that aimed to explore what, um, what, um, what it meant for the, uh, the libraries to engage in such a role in supporting and collaborating with digital humanities scholars in terms, for example, um, in terms of the activities um, they were involved in, uh, the, the skills required, the knowledge base and the infrastructure. Also, we're interested in learning at the types of tools that digital humanities scholars in their communities employed. Uh, in the context of the collaborations that were formed, like the type and the purpose of the projects and the terms uh, of these collaborations. And finally, uh, we wanted to find out about um, existing cases of such collaborations and um, use them um, as, case, as case studies to understand further the, the role of the libraries in this humanities scholarship. So regarding this, uh, this case studies, uh, we, we, uh, the, the, the participants that um, um, were, that were um, 
that took part in these case studies. Uh, they were chosen based on their activity in the areas of the production and preservation of digital humanities tools, the ways they engaged with the digital humanities community, um, like um, whether they were supporting researchers at different stages of their projects uh, or being more active collaborators uh, in them. And we decided to look in more detail at three institutions, the Sussex University Library, the St Andrews Library and the Seffield University Library. So going now to the results, just to mention that we had um, a total of 27 responses to the survey and uh, for those that are not familiar with RL UK, we have 37 members and uh, usually it was just one person uh, from its institution taking part to the survey and it was, led, um, it was left to the institutions to decide who was the most suitable uh, person to answer um, uh, the survey. And we also had one, one response, response from a non rural UK member as well. So one of the, first, um, of the first things that we asked through the survey was about the, uh, about the definitions they employed, if they employed um, at the definition of digital humanities within uh, the area institution. So we found that um, m most of the times they didn't have, uh, participants didn't have a formal a formal definition for um, work, and, and usually they didn't work in the context of a specific framework around digital humanities, but they had working definitions, and these were um, often shaped by the types of initiatives their scholarly communities led. At the, type, uh, at the time, the types and level of participation in these initiatives, as well as the expertise of, of the staff members that were involved in these, uh, these activities. So next, this uh, gives you an idea. Um, this graph gives you an idea of the different uh, different activities that were undertaken by the DH communities in the institutions that uh, took part in our survey. So you can see that most of the activity was conducted around museums and cultural heritage-related research, uh, digitization, text and data mining, and then digital editions and digital publishing. And as you can imagine, many of these activities involve the use of uh, library collections. So looking um, in more detail about the, uh, the services provided by the library to digital humanities scholars. So um, the, the two main, um, main areas were the ad hoc support and the DH materials uh, and collections. And we, uh, through analyzing the data, we, um, we saw an emphasis on promoting the use of library collections uh, in DH projects. So, and this, um, this chart gives you an idea of uh, how many people responded uh, positively in the question around the different collaborative activities between the library and the digital humanities community in their uh, institution. Uh, so you can see that 63% um, uh, responded, uh, said yes, that they do um, participate, actively participate in collaborative work with uh, scholars. And at this point, um, I should mention that even, even some of the people, actually most of them, that uh, replied other, they referred to initiatives like uh, organizing um, collaborative seminars and so on, that uh, they can also be uh, considered as uh, collaborative work in this context. So some further evidence um, around the around this, this collaborative culture uh, that exists at the moment in the institutions uh, was the um, participants' response on the question um, around the role of library in the creation, archiving, curation, and preservation of, of tools for digital humanities research. And as you can see, 51.9% um, uh, of, of the participants said that uh, the creation of digital tools would be a collaborative activity between uh, librarians and the responsible um, digital humanities units or teams, and the 63% uh, replied the same uh, when it comes to um, archiving and curating tools for digital humanities. And finally, the 55.6% agreed that libraries have a role in the preservation of tools uh, for digital humanities uh, research, again, um, in collaboration with any responsible um, 
units and teams. Going now to, to look at the collections um, in more detail as tools for collaboration, uh, actually it was no surprise that um, very often the collections were at the core of these collaborations, as um, many of the participants reported that um, collection professionals were often the first point of contact for researchers when uh, looking for material to use in their projects. And um, so there was a lot of uh, co-building activity of collections um, between librarians and, and scholars. And this, this was, of course, because uh, library professionals would, be, um, the, uh, have, would have the, the best working knowledge of the collections. Uh, this, these activities, though, were seen very positively from, um, by, by information professionals and uh, library professionals uh, as well. And these are some of the things that came up, some of the statements that came up from the survey. And um, many of them said that collections need to be trans translatable in digital humanities tools, like uh, for, te for text and data mining reasons, in order to achieve greater impact. Um, and then that um, also collaborative work between librarians and scholars can help solve issues around digital collections, um, such as digital born data and their long-term uh, accessibility. And of course, uh, collections were found not only, um, were valuable not only for research purposes, but uh, for teaching and teaching collaborations as well. So uh, now I would like to um, go a little bit more about, to talk a little bit more about the case studies and um, talk about how these, um, these institutions were forming these collaborations, about the circumstances of these collaborations and how collections were used in, in the context of, these, of the different activities. So the first one um, was the Sussex University Library, who um, participates in the Sussex uh, Humanities Lab. And as our participants, uh, or first participant um, told us, uh, the aim was to embed the work of the library and uh, special collections in the research and teaching activity of the lab through providing relevant services. Also, the library uh, was found to lead at the time of this research, um, to lead and contribute to digital projects, often through providing archives-related expertise, advice on digital preservation or the technical infrastructure, as well as participating in funding bids uh, led by the lab. And uh, finally, apart from uh, participating in this type uh, of activities, the library was actively involved in the organization of events uh, that focused on showcasing innovative research that falls within the scope of the, of the lab's interests, such as the recent uh, Digital Preservation for Social Sciences and Humanities Conference that took place during the summer, um, as well as participating in different seminars and networking activities. And as you can see from um, participant A's uh, quote here, um, part taking part in these types of activities and um, contributing to the lab was really um, a very positive uh, experience uh, for everyone. So now moving on to the um, second case study. So in this case, the digital humanities and research computing team well, was usually approached by researchers, mainly academic staff and postgraduate students from different subject areas who uh, lacked the technical skills required to conduct specific tasks in the context of a digital project, such as, um, and this type of project usually involved the building of a database or an archive, or maybe the creation of a, a digital edition and used part of, of these collections. Uh, they also provided help with funding applications for these projects, uh, but also um, the team, apart from, um, from uh, helping uh, researchers build their projects, uh, was responsible for producing and maintaining St. Andrew's digital collections, as well as archiving, curating and preserving digital projects in collaboration with the relevant departments and schools. And um, yet, apart from, this, um, apart from uh, this work, they were also um, responsible for initiating and leading digital humanities pro uh, projects related to the library's digital collections or other projects and digitization activities with the aim of increasing the library's visibility in the area and uh, working together with staff and students for the purposes of uh, seminar teaching and the delivery of specialist uh, digital humanities training. 
So finally, they were responsible, as in the previous case, they were responsible for building digital humanities communities interested in exploring issues such as uh, software development and other digital humanities related uh, topics. So, and um, again, this, um, it was reported that this was very much a new experience and, um, but I hope librarians uh, contribute in new ways and um, do some innovative work that could con contribute to research and teaching. Okay, so the final, um, the final uh, case study uh, was the um, Seville University Library. And in this case, their library worked, uh, were found to work in partnership with the Digital Humanities Institute at Seville University and uh, had often been involved in projects, especially with a focus on its collections, which uh, could, could be characterized as digital humanities projects. For example, uh, library staff um, had worked with linguists on the use of uh, Yale's 19th century collections online with Sketch Engine. And in our uh, report of the project, we have included um, a full list of all the projects and activities that were, um, re that were reported through the survey in the case studies. So you can have a look at the different activities if you, would, if you want. And also the services were built around collections. Um, were built many times around collections and that was a very important part of the work of, um, um, of the library for supporting academics, including digital humanities researchers. And the library professionals enabled access to and the use of the collections with the aim of facilitating the research process from data collection to publishing. And digitized and born digital collections were also available for, um, from the library for academic use. Moreover, um, uh, the library was found to provide a range of workshops and lectures of interest to the eight scholars on topics related to open research and the evolving nature of scholarly communication, as well as um, tailored support on issues such as data management planning. And it is worth mentioning that at the, at the point of this research, there was coming out it's a support service offer around that data and text uh, mining, which of course is a, um, a topic of considerable interest um, to digital humanities scholars at, um, as the um, first graph also, also showed. And finally, the library um, had invested in the, digital in the digital preservation system, which will be used to archive and preserve all research outputs and digital humanities projects included, and digital collections for um, the long term uh, in collaboration with the relevant uh, schools and departments. Just coming to uh, the conclusion. So generally speaking, um, all this um, activity and uh, the collaborative work were, were seen uh, very positively from, um, uh, from most of the library professionals. And uh, it, was a great, uh, it, was, it was mentioned as a great opportunity to increase the impact of collections, to lead to fun further funding and raise the status of the library and its, and its staff, of course. There were some challenges reported that all, um, should always be taken into account, um, like the diverse types of projects and the variety of digital humanities output formats were often um, uh, was uh, often considered um, was considered a challenge. The lack of common language between um, library professionals and digital humanities scholars, as well as common language around what digital humanities is and what types of um, support services we need. And finally, um, a limited resource and lack of infrastructure could uh, sometimes be a problem as well. So um, coming back to the beginning, this was a very, um, this was a project that was really related to our, um, to our interest and the strategic goals. And we aim to further explore some of the issues um, that uh, came up through this report and look at the state of digital scholarship in the UK libraries and beyond. Um, also, we, um, through that work, we aim to uh, create um, different, um, different materials like briefing papers and reports and, um, to provide for, for our members uh, to use. And uh, finally, um, some other examples of our participation in the general discussion around digital humanities uh, are our involvement in our local digital humanities group at Senate House, uh, the Libre Digital Humanities and Cultural Heritage Group, as well as through our special collections program activities, where many times the discussion evolves around digital humanities issues, especially when it comes to opening up the collections through, uh, through digital projects. 
So uh, thank you very much. These are my contact details, and that's the link to the report if you would like to um, have a look. So thank you very much. Thank you.